Okay, let's work at combustion analysis. You already know how to do empirical formulas, but here's a specialty situation. This is used in particular for carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen compounds, or just carbon, hydrogen. Or there could be other materials there, but you'd have to have other information in the problem, and we'll take a look at one of those. First of all, we will measure the mass of the compound, and it will be placed in a furnace or a, an oven in which oxygen would be pumped in, and the substance would be burned. Then there's a collector that could be uh, taken off and weighed, and this substance will absorb water so that it will increase after the combustion and can be weighed. This could also be disconnected here, and there's another a container that will uh, absorb carbon dioxide so that the carbon dioxide could be weighed after. So the products of the combustion would travel through, the water would be taken out, and then the rest would be taken out, the carbon dioxide would be absorbed, and that would mean that this substance, this carbon, hydrogen, and perhaps oxygen substance, as it turns into water and carbon dioxide, through complete combustion, those materials can be collected and weighed. Notice there's nothing to absorb oxygen, not to mention that oxygen is also introduced through the reaction. Therefore, the oxygen must be determined sort of by backing into it, knowing the original compound, knowing the H's and the carbons that are there, through subtraction, you can figure out how much oxygen, if at all. So, let's say a combustion device was used to determine the empirical formula for some compound, and the sample originally weighed 0.6349 grams, and some carbon dioxide was produced, some water was produced, and there were no other oxides. This is telling us there was no nitrogen, no sulfur, no phosphorus. Now would be a great time to pause the video and try to at least get started, uh, if not have at the whole problem, by changing to moles of each element, well, moles of carbon dioxide and moles of water, which would allow you to get moles of each element, and the mass of these two elements so that you can check to see if there's any missing mass, which would of course be oxygen. So let's look at it. The carbon dioxide is converted into moles. Then this moles of carbon dioxide, which is to say moles of carbon, can then further be calculated into grams of carbon, which we'll need below. The water, which we were told in the problem, can be converted into moles of water. But let's not forget, water's a buy one, get two hydrogens. And so that will give us twice as many H's, which of course is the same mass of H's. We needed these masses because we're told the original sample, then we need to subtract the carbon and subtract the hydrogen, and we can realize that that missing mass is of course the oxygen, which then can be converted into moles. Notice that 16 is used here, not 32, because this is actually grams of O. This is not grams of diatomic oxygen element. So then the moles of carbon will be lined up, and the moles of hydrogen will be lined up, and we'll take each of these three moles of the three elements and divide by the smallest value. That happens to be oxygen, so we'll divide that into each of the moles, resulting in one for the oxygen, three and a half. Now that's too much rounding, so we're going to leave that as three and a half on the carbon and three on the hydrogen. Whenever you get here and you have a one half or close to one half, we're going to multiply all the element mole values by two and end up with two oxygen, seven carbon, and six hydrogen, hence this chemical formula. Now, we're not looking at structures right now, but here it is, the structure of this chemical formula. And you may be wondering, where are those seven carbons? 
Here they are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven carbons. Easy to find the two oxygens. Of course, there's unshared pairs missing. And then the hydrogens would be located one here, two, three, four, five, and six. So now's a great time to remind ourselves that we want to embrace the millimole. It's really convenient. It can avoid a lot of extra zeros if we're given small quantities. So pause the video and take a moment and see if you can convert the molar mass of carbon dioxide in grams per mole into milligrams per millimole. Hopefully you were able to know that carbon dioxide is 44. And of course there's 1,000 milligrams in every gram. That allows us to cancel grams out. And of course there's 1,000 millimoles in every mole. That allows us to cancel moles out. And the two units left standing are of course millimole, milligram per millimole. That's very helpful. It's the same number, just different Units. Why would we care about milligrams and millimoles is because here we're given a problem in which we're given milligrams of a sample and resulting in milligrams of carbon dioxide and milligrams produced of water. So there's no need really to change these milligrams and run the risk of changing or moving your decimal point incorrectly or getting lost or losing a zero here or there. Further, this problem is complicated because cocaine has nitrogen in it. So in order to know about the moles of nitrogen in the chemical formula, we need some more information. And so we're told that this compound has 4.62% nitrogen by mass. Here it is. There's lots to look at here, but I've changed the milligrams of carbon into millimole of carbon. I've changed the milligrams of water with its molar mass and not forgetting that water has two hydrogens into millimole of hydrogens. And then took the percentage of nitrogen multiplying by the sample will give me milligrams of nitrogen. Again, not nitrogen gas, so we'll use 14, not 28. It's just nitrogen, the element, to result in millimole of nitrogen. So I know the carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen. We still, of course, need to look at the quantity of oxygen, or we need to find or back into the oxygen. So here we are with the sample. So I have millimole of carbon. That's an easy conversion into milligrams of carbon. And of course, the millimole of hydrogen is the same as the milligrams of hydrogen. We determined earlier the milligrams of nitrogen. So all of that allows us to see that, oh yes, there is some oxygen in this compound, which you can turn into moles with 16, not 32, or millimoles. And now here we have all four mole values in this compound. Again, pick out the smallest, which happens to be nitrogen. Divide each mole value by nitrogen so that one, the nitrogen, will come up as a one. And then each of the other substances result in their mole values, giving the chemical formula for cocaine.